<laughs> you not meant to respond. Welcome to Talk CSS Max Content, our first attempt at a conference. Yay! <laughs> We've been running Talk CSS for two years now as a regular monthly meetup. Um, the reason that we're here today is because we like to play live on the hard difficulty level. Uh, we've never worked out how to do things easy. Um, and in the absence of CSS Conf, we decided to do something of our own. So this is like a half conference, but it's still a full conference with everything you could kind of hope for but packed into three hours. Um, we started doing this with no real idea of how to put that together. Uh, because we don't have any clue about what we're doing with anything, uh, which is pretty much our motto. We don't write it down because we're not that organised. If this works out, we're going to trademark any house. <laughs> <laughs> but all of this started by accident two years ago anyway. Um, we were sitting on the CopyJS Slack channel, wondering why there was a Singapore talk JS and there was no talk CSS. So what, what's Java, what is that anyway? Is that even a language? Um, so we created Singapore CSS in about two hours. We had our first meetup set up, we had a logo, we had everything. Uh, two years on, here we are, and we've got our mini conference with actual speakers. Because um, <laughs> the, the failure is, if no one else turns up, it's always waging on myself. Um, so we've managed to fill the lineup, mostly not doing that today. So that's been really good. Um, we oh, housekeeping bits anyway. You've all got your drinks at your seats. There are some cookies outside. If you haven't got one, you can get one during the break. I think there's coffee here. Is there coffee here? There, 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 no. there is coffee here. So you can get coffee at some point. We're going to have a break halfway through anyway, so that's definitely coffee time. Um, if you haven't got your t-shirt, if you registered late, you can pick up yours halfway through. Um, toilets are all the way around the side. Is there anything else I need to cover housekeeping wise? I don't think so. Anyway, okay. We've put together what we hope is a, a pretty wide range of a lineup today. Um, I've got Andy Clark who always comes in from the design angle of things. Because that's, we are here, I mean, Talk CSS is not necessarily the hardcore coding side of things. It's always CSS is somewhere in between the code and the design. And that's where, where we live in our work lives, and I'm sure most of you do as well. Um, because of that, it's always difficult. It's not an easy thing to, to work out what we actually are. And our lineup today reflects that. So you'll see some code, you'll see some design, and hopefully out of this you'll get some inspiration and go back to work tomorrow and do something really awesome. Um, I will jump across to our sponsor video, which is the awkward bit. The um, sponsor videos are always awkward. I don't even know if my sound is actually set up. This is Mozilla who very kindly helped us exist, so let's try this. They set up a roadshow here in Singapore early this year. Last year. Last, I don't know what year it is. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to try this anyway. <laughs> we'll try that again. <laughs> Anyone still got hearing? <laughs> <laughs> I'm the co-founder of XR Alliance. We promote uh, industry development and so we help to bring the VR AR ecosystem here in Asia. My name is Jeremy Keith. I'm a web developer and co-founder of a design agency in Brighton and England called Clear Left. My name is Klok Tu. I'm from Singapore, from Ying and Clock Studios. So I'm here at Mozilla Roadshow event and then we're trying out A-Frame and A-Painter. Right now, I think um, everyone is pretty much siloed. So designers are doing their own events and they're creating their own. Um, and we love to see developers and designers coming together in this community. And it would be great to see um, at this stage to have more diverse voices and people from different backgrounds to come and create VR and AR. 
I think that VR, AR, um, the platforms are uh, still siloed by itself and the web will definitely help bring this creative community together and uh, showcase their projects. And I think um, the power of community is huge. When you want to uh, adopt a technology, uh, what questions you should be asking of that technology. I think it's really important that we have uh, a healthy competition amongst browser makers. We've been in a situation in the past where we had one single browser dominating, and that was a bad situation. And so the more browser makers, the better, as far as I'm concerned. I'm really excited about what you can do in a web browser these days that previously you would have had to have written a native app. So in the next five years, I'm just imagining we're going to see the barriers blur between native, web, it won't matter. People will just use whatever is handy. Um, yeah, it's exciting times. I guess now in the 21st century, we want to, want to take that art form into the virtual world, into a more expressive, you bridge art, design, and now comes technology into the place. Being connected with technology, like right now, is the importance for us to move forward. Yeah. So I guess with A-Frame or A-Painter, it gives us the opportunity to actually give our clients or the public a sense of a new environment. You can go as small as a model or as big as a building. I guess my favorite part of the A-Frame and A-Painter is you can see all the strokes are being made we need to move, but you need to see the artist move around 360 degrees. Without art, the technology is just a body. <coughs> Thank you, awkward sponsor video. <laughs> 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 right, our first speaker today is Andy Clark. Um, we basically set the line up today by thinking about who our favourite speakers were that we wanted here, and I picked Andy. Um, Strangely enough, I've never seen you speak before, Andy. What? I know. I've sent people to workshops. I've tried to hire him a couple of times. But, um, years ago, when I was, I'm originally from Perth in Australia, and there was nothing in terms of any meetups or anything else like that. And my, my team uh, used to sit around, and we'd read these blogs from people all across the world. Uh, seeing what they were doing, and people would share things. And this is like early 2000s, so it was a pretty exciting time in, in Webland. CSS was still pretty new, not many people really adopting it. And there were a handful of people at the time who really raised the bar consistently. And blogs were the place, everyone had an RSS feed, and you'd, you'd stay tuned for the next blog from someone. Um, we used to sit there and we'd see um, someone's launched a new site design, so their whole team would jump into their web browsers and load, load their browsers and pull apart everything that's been done. Um, Andy is one of those people who's continued doing this for years. He's always been that step ahead of where the rest of the world is. And I'm really excited today that he's coming here to try to inspire all of us um, to follow in his footsteps and just really step beyond what we usually think about when we're doing web design. Um, so without any further ado, Andy Clark.